Hello, in this video we are going to be covering flashing the screen white when the player dies. So if I just click play, start playing the game, and I'm gonna crash into the top pipe like so. So we've crashed at the moment, can't, can't replay it, can't go to any game over. That will be coming very, very soon as well. But in this video, we're gonna make you just flash white because that's what happens in the original flag bird. And I think it's quite cool as well. So you get the sound effect, and it flashes white. So let's implement the white flash now. First of all, go to your definition file, the good old definitions, and you wanna add a define for the flash speed. So you can just increase this if you want this to appear faster, but as usual, experiment with the values. I found this works pretty darn well, but feel free to change it. Maybe you want it slower or faster, feel free to do that. So what we're going to do now is create a class to handle all of the flash stuff. So as usual, I'm sure you know how to create a class or the files at the very least for your particular IDE. Just call it flash, like flash from a TV show, the flash from the DC universe. And now in the header file, get rid of the contents and put hash pragma once hash include sfml graphics it's just the usual drill here obviously you gotta be able to spell it correctly <laughs> hash include game m game nope game the hpp and this will allow us to use the game data ref because we'll be passing that into we have to draw the window i mean draw to the window and get properties about the window we're going to do hash include definitions.hpp and now do a namespace sonar we're going to have a class called flash we're going to have a constructor which will do game data ref so it just takes a game data ref called data we're gonna have a void show we're gonna take a float dt so this is it's almost like the update method but it's only going to be used once or in one particular instance draw so this will well draw our application and now it's going to create some private variables these are public so let's just put them in the appropriate section the game data ref again just the same stuff as before this is just our local reference to it sf rectangle shape and it's going to be called underscore shape we're just going to use a rectangle shape that allows us to set properties like position size and color we don't need a sprite for it but you could use a sprite if you wanted something a bit more complex aka not just a solid color it's gonna be bool underscore flash, not plus slash, underscore flash on. So this is just gonna be tracking whether it's flashing on or not at this particular moment in time to prevent it from constantly flashing on. While I was actually planning this tutorial, I had a little bit of a bug where you just constantly kept flashing. <laughs> it looked pretty trippy to be honest. And yeah, it definitely wasn't the result we was going for. Now in the flash CPP file, you can get rid of all of these comments as usual, the default stuff. We're going to do namespace, sonar. And now in here, we're going to have flash, colon, colon, flash. This is just a constructor which takes a game data ref. And it's called data. We're just going to automatically assign it to the data variable. And now we're just going to set the, we're going to initialize the shape. So do underscore shape equals SF rectangle shape. And for this, we will specify a vector 2F. So this will be the size. And for this, we are essentially passing in the window, window dot get size like so we'll just pass in that in actually i was literally going to do dot get size and then dot x and dot y but what we can just do instead 
you pass it in like so. I believe this should work. It's this is an unsigned int. Let's have a look if this works. And okay, this is only because this is unsigned and that is what's it called vector two f. But if you assign it like this, this will be a okay. So cool. We're gonna do shape dot set fill color. So we want a color now. We can just put sf color. You can manually set a color like 255, 255, 255 and the initial one will be zero because we want the first three RGB to be fully on then we want the alpha to be fully off or you could do colon colon white problem with doing it this way is it's constantly on then and then you would have to manually set the alpha but this is the preferred method for our situation so 255, 255, 255 and zero so again RGB set to fully on hence it's going to be white and zero is set so it's not visible at the start because we don't want it to be visible when the game is being played only when it's game over flash on is equal to true and now we're going to implement the show method so void flash show and we are going to check if it's flash on is true so let's go flash on we're going to do int alpha equals and we're going to cast this to an int you'll see in a second why underscore shape dot get fill color so what we're doing is getting the alpha color and we are adding on the flash speed time by dt like so so this is essentially just going to increase our alpha value so it will actually show up because otherwise it's not going to be showing and what we're going to say is if alpha is equal to 255.0f or greater than then we want to flip it around so then it's going to be underscore flash on is equal to false and alpha is equal to 255.0f like so and now we actually set the alpha value so underscore shape dot set fill color and we're going to be putting something very similar sf color color 255, 255, 255, and alpha. So this is, by default, it's true because that's what's gonna first happen when you die, it's gonna flash on, then it's gonna flash off, which we reversed right here. But we actually need essentially the reverse now because yes, we have it set to false, but we need to actually implement the code. To do that, very simple, put an else. So if it isn't flash on, then we're going to do something pretty similar so we can copy and paste this the big difference here we're going to be taking away instead of adding and if this is less than 0, 0.0 so aka fully off we will just put this to 0, 0.0 and that is it for the show method we just need to have a draw method now so void flash draw and we just do underscore data window dot draw underscore shape like so and now if we go to our game state dot hpp so the header file so game state dot hpp we are going to do hash include flash dot hpp scroll down and we need a flash variable so flash asterisk flash remember it's a pointer because we need to reconstruct it afterwards or we, the only constructor available is one that takes a parameter and we have a game state after that we're going to do ff rectangle shape underscore game over flash and we're going to do a boolean underscore flash on and now if we go to the what's it called the game state dot cpp we need to construct the flash objects so of flash equals new flash underscore data underscore data like so so that's pretty cool 
And if we start going to where we have our update method, so handle input, go after this, keep going, keep going. And what we want to do is go to the end of the update method. So that is this right here. What we want to do is check if the game state equals e game over, then well, it's game over game state so if the game e game over state is equal to the current game state then we would do flash show dt and finally we need to do flash dot draw so by default it's always going to be drawing but remember it's alpha it's got an alpha value of zero by default so you won't actually see it oh i don't know why why i did this we don't actually need these <laughs> we put them in a separate flash class so to make it simpler and we have a dt value not float dt and now let's run it and see what we get okay let's click play let's start moving around that's pretty darn cool so let me crash into this bottom pipe there you go we get the flash fantastic that looked excellent and it looked very elegant. So let's just try it again with the ground just to make sure it's working the way it should be. Boom. And that is it for flashing the white screen on game over. In the next video, we are going to be covering something really cool. We're going to be advancing this game a lot further. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. If you want to check out the source code, feel free. There will be a link to the GitHub page along with this video. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.